All right, everybody, I've got it back in. As you've seen on that previous little bit, I had pinched it, but I did get that wire re-soldered, redone, and back in place again. So now I'm going to start soldering connections down over here. So without further ado, I will get onto that. All right, I'm back after a short break. I think I might have lost a little bit because I hit my max time, but I did finish this tube here and I've come over now and started doing this one. I put the power into that one. I'm gonna put it into the other half of that one, but I also need to hook um, my, these grids will go into, they're supposed to go into pin five, but we want a 1.5K grid stopper. But rather than having to put stuff on the board, I will just jump them between six and five and then they will be uh, set to go. So we're gonna do that right now.
Oh, and I'm off camera now, huh? I just realized that. So, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I will adjust that in a minute. But All right, and you can probably only kind of see, but I did get these two pin, these guys wired up um, and good to go. So, power tubes are wired. We will pro I'll try and get a close up of some of these as well for people so they can get a chance to see what they look like. Um, all right, so this side is now done. I will double check everything later to my schematic and to my layout, but for now, that is connected. So what I need to work on now is the opposite side, which you guys can probably see better anyway, which is where my jacks and everything are, so. Oh, it looks like I have these reversed from the way I want them, so I'm gonna have to undo those. Ha uh ha. -huh. Because I basically, the grounded one is supposed to be on the right in the image. It doesn't matter a whole lot, I can still wire it the right way, but rather than fight that battle, and they'd also be reversed, one would be you know, high and low, but um, where do I put that? Is that it? We will reverse the order of these guys and turn them around. That is a finger burn. Luckily, I've got some calluses on there, so I only barely stung. But it smelled pretty nasty. Okay, so uh, I ran out of time again, and you guys missed me doing a little bit of this stuff. So I was about to start soldering. Uh, some of the stuff in, but I remembered I have to get, um, I've got to jumper things correctly here first. Uh, the tone pot, that's correct, but then I need to go from the end one here into that middle one there with this 500 picofarad one, so. Okay, so now I've just drilled a few holes because I'm going to put some grounds in. So I just got to grab me a few uh, nuts and bolts here. It's 
the way I'm going to do this, the, the exact Dumble one is a little bit different. And this is potentially, um, actually this is the wrong, potentially not perfect. On the original Dumble, um, you know, the way he did the, the grounds, he's using the Fender style where they just had a, a brass a brass thing that kind of came across the behind the pots and then he would solder things directly to that and then the pressure between the pots and it created a ground uh, and then he just had multiple different grounds well i've got multiple different grounds like he did but the big difference here is that i won't have the ease of so like this is the preamp ground here i'll also do my input grounds over here and then i've got this this phase the phase inverter ground and another filtering ground that's for the phase inverter level i will also put to ground here or maybe that's for the last fifth stage, but basically, uh, well, you know, I have to think about that because that one might do better. This is the this is the filter ring that goes right to the level for the first preamp tube, so I might actually bring that one over here as well. Then the phase inverter ground can go here, um, and then uh, this is a this is like the a separate part of the grounding scheme as well for the phase inverter over here. It's the or no, this is for the power section. So anyway, I've got another one I'm going to put here. That I'm going to put all three of these power grounds to. And we'll hopefully get that filtered out. I'm trying to decide which way I'll go with this one. I'll either put it here or here. But uh, this one, because it's that last preamp filtering, I think I'll also put over here as well. So we'll get going on that now. All right, I think we got a good solder there. I had to leave it for a while because it's also connected directly to the chassis, which has a decent amount of heat sink capability, which will make it harder for us to get that good uh, grounding connection. Now, the other thing I just thought of is actually what I should be doing to these guys is just roughing them up with something like some sandpaper uh, really quickly. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. You'll look, I'll kind of do a before and after. See, I, I said these are kind of old, they're kind of cr crusty and corroded. Um, so I'm gonna go in and take a quick break on the filming and just see if I can make them shiny. All right, there we have it. That is, oops, much shinier. I'm trying to get that in a light, but as you can see, I've just roughed it up and removed any kind of oxidation that happened. So that's a little bit better. And I will resume putting these other two guys in there. Oh, whoops. Yeah, that just peeled the entire thing off, but that's all right. It's going to such a short distance, I'm not too worried about it. All right, I've decided, I think this one will work best. I've, if, I, if you heard me mention before, I, I didn't get, I gotta get it tied to this ground and to this, now that I've connected them all correctly. Okay, so that's the shield ground I'm trying to connect right there. And then I'll bring this over as well, but this is gonna connect the grounds to my um, my pots down over to the same grounding point. Now, once that's cooled, I will kind of bend these back down, but I wanted to get that up and away from the other... I don't want this accidentally touching those other ones, so... That's why I did that. Alright, I'm not 
that's definitely taking a lot of heat to get that to melt in there because of the chassis contact, but I think I got that now. So, the input jacks generally get their ground from being connected directly to the chassis, uh, but you can't always guarantee 100% that will work, but uh, that would just mean that in theory that we get buzz and if they're tighten them, they'll go away. But we're tightening all of these guys, which we don't want to have not a good ground, uh, correctly into that one, so. All right, next. It's going to be this one. Let's look at this for a minute and think if there's anything we're missing. We've got the ground there. All right, let's check some continuity of the ground. I'll just clip this guy on here. So, we do have a path to ground through these guys, right? Because of the tip not being pushed. But, let's just take this one. Boom, gone. Similarly with this one. Perfect. So yeah, that looks like we've got our ground. The way there should be. So at this point, I am done, and I will try and do a little bit, I'm gonna do a couple of wider and closer shots for you guys. That will hopefully help make that clear. So there'll be a little, a few cross cuts here. I'm gonna adjust and move and it'll be funny and then we'll be good, so here we go. All right, there's the preamp stage, as still as I can hold it. Slowly rock it over and across. There's a power section, of course, and the rectifier here is hidden a little bit, but. basically in business to where I think I'll be ready to turn it on. So the first thing I'll be doing uh, is going through taking the chart that I have here. As you well know and I've shown before, you should always make sure you've double checked and triple checked everything. So I will be going through and taking this type of a chart and looking at the stuff over on the inputs anywhere I'm looking, you know, like here. I will compare that to you know wherever it goes on here and put a magic marker and say yes that's in the right spot those things all exist those do what they're supposed to so effectively i will go through and that's just that last check and make sure everything looks hooked up correctly before i try my first power on now when i do my first power on uh, i will leave the two uh, the, or i will leave the the main tubes out and only hook up the rectifier so that I can see if my voltages look okay across the board. And if they do look okay across the board, then I'll be ready to plug in the rest of the tubes and give that a try. But we'll do that for you guys here in my next video sec segment here. <laughs> 